Joining us right now, Knicks fans, this is your main man, CP, the franchise. What's up, CP? My man, Keith McPherson. First of all, shout out to either you or Connor for the Jay Electronica intro to come into the <laughs> show, man. I like that. I like that, man. I think every time I'm on, we get that uh, Exhibit C beat to come in. It's it's monumental. It's colossal. It's a great way to bring you in, man. I don't think you need any intro. Knicks fans know who you are. Nets fans know who you are. I know Evan's always talking about how he keeps up with the Knicks through you and your channel trending up. I, I think you guys passed the 70 thousand subscriber milestone a couple weeks back where you at now 70k yeah we're, we're creeping up on 71k and and uh you know the the ananobi trade really shattered things man we had a record over 7,000 live viewers as well man so it's been it's been a big year for kftv you know when you brought up evan roberts it brought a smile to my face because just yesterday we had evan on on our, on our matinee show is previewing the knicks versus the nets game talking trash and then in the evening time, or actually earlier this morning, rather, I saw the picture of the four of you, you, Lugie, Evan, and Tiki at the game, and, you know, with the Knicks winning, it just put a smile on my face, man. <laughs> I, I bet it did. And, you know, Evan is defeated. Evan gave you some blood, all the Knicks fans today. He said everything. I'm not the same as Evan, though. Like, I'm not I'm not defeated. I know the Nets are trash. Like, I, I went in there not expecting the win. I go in there rooting for the team, but, like, I just watched them lose to the Clippers, and yeah. the Clippers closed them out with a 22 nothing run. I watched them give the Trailblazers their 10th and 11th win on the season. I watched them lose to the Wizards. I watched them get uh, find $100,000 for resting healthy players two days after Christmas in that Bucks game. This is a sinking ship. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not feeling the way that I felt about the Nets in the past years. I know they're cooked. So tonight I was talking about all the Knicks fans kind of pounding their chest about taking over the arena. That's no accomplishment. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and you can add a 32 to 18 fourth quarter uh, collapse there by yeah. one of the worst fourth quarter teams in the NBA to, to add to the misery. But you know what? You know, for the, for the Knicks fans in there gloating, it's like I told Evan yesterday on my show. For the last 20 some odd years, I mean, the Nets have really dominated these matchups, whether it was through the kid era yes, sir. or it was through the, uh, the the KD Kyrie era. You know, the Knicks have not had much success against the Nets. So it's like I told Evan yesterday, I like it because it, this, this is now the time for the Knicks to take advantage of the Nets being the inferior team and, and stacking up some wins in the win column. So now they're up 2-0 in the, uh, in the season series. Yeah, stay down till you come up. This is the get back. Right, all, the, all those L's you took in a row, was it seven or eight in a row that the Nets had on the Knicks? Now you're stacking wins. And and what I'm trying to tell the Knicks fan out there is, like, you're, you're stacking wins against the Nets, but that's nothing to write home about. That's yeah. nothing to be on Twitter writing about for the last 24 hours. You want to stack wins so that you get where you want to be in the Eastern Conference. You want to stack wins so that you feel confident about what you're doing going into the playoffs now. Speaking of the playoffs in the Eastern Conference, I keep saying that you need to make one more move. Watching that group that had OG Ananobi, uh, Miles McBride, Quentin Grimes, Precious, like watching that group, and it was like OG versus Lonnie Walker in the, the beginning yeah. of the fourth quarter last night. I'm like, they need another score. OG can score, but like yeah. you need a microwave score. You need a, a IQ type. You need another guy that in the playoffs, when all the starters are resting, you can either close the gap on a team or you can hold the lead on a team because you have a guy that can create his own shot and put the ball in the hoop. Uh, absolutely right. The the manual quickly trade has left a huge hole in that Knicks bench. And every night when you're in that, you know, end of the third into the fourth, that stretch where you, you're looking to buy some time, allowing Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle to get some rest so that they can close the game properly it is, I mean, it is pulling your hair out. It is cardiac nicks, as we always say. You are sweating it out because that unit just does not have a capable, reliable shot creator or playmaker, a guy that you can really go to and trust that he's going to deliver. That's what Emmanuel quickly was able to do over his last couple of years with the Knicks. And so you're right. They definitely do need firepower. Uh, but for now, you know, during this stretch, what what I do like is that I like that it forces a guy like an OG Ananobi to kind of switch his role and become more of a dynamic player, become more of a shot creator. Because, look, by the end of this season, 
The Knicks are going to have an announcement where OG Ananobi is going to get a big, big deal. And some Knicks fans are going to be like, you know what, he's worth it. And others are going to be like, whoa, this is this is kind of an overpay here. And so what I want to see him doing is continue to work on his game because he's going to need to show that. Yes, the 3 and D is elite. But if he can show a little bit more in the intermediate, it will allow fans to digest his new contract and really see how much value he brings to this team. Yeah, well, you, you got to keep him because you don't want him going to Philly anyway. Like, you don't want him going to a competitor. You made the trade for him. You gave up homegrown, drafted Knicks that were beloved. You got to pay him, and the fans will get over it. The same way fans kind of overreacted to the trade, they got over it pretty quickly when they saw his fit and how the Knicks were winning with him. Um, speaking of fits, <laughs> the best fit in a long time at that point guard position is Jalen Brunson. Did he say something about the WNBA? Uh, back in December, Becky Hammond had smoke for him. And then Cand- <laughs> Candace Parker last night. Like, why are, they, why are they discrediting this man? Why are they talking down on this man? Why are they taking shots at Jalen Brunson, who is the savior point guard for the New York Knicks? You know what it is, man? I just think that over the years, the media has gotten so used to dumping on the Knicks that, you know, these media members feel like they have to do it because it's, it's the in thing to do. It's a popular thing to do. But if you look at recent years, the narrative is changing, and Jalen Brunson is a big part of that. You look at these last two years, he's been one of the best players in the NBA. Make no mistake. I hope he makes the all-star team this year because he's, he's very much deserving of it, man. I mean, you, you look at the way that he operates, the way that he creates separation with his size, either using his physicality or using his footwork, the craftiness in which he's able to get into the mid-range. I mean, it is just a sight to see every single night. And so I think, you know, a lot of these these pundits like to, to kind of build on the old narrative of the Knicks, but it just shows that they're not watching every night. Right. And, you know, that's why they come to Knicks fan TV. No, no, no shameless plug here, but that's why they come to us because the fans know that we, we tap into this team on a nightly basis, and so they know that they'll get an accurate perspective on things. Yeah, good. And it's great to have fan-made media. It's great to have fans that do watch the team every night that have been seeing the progression over the years that can speak on it because these pundits yeah. helicopter in. And, like, if people didn't hear, Becky Hammond was basically saying that, you know, Brunson is a small player, like, size-wise. He's not going to be able to stand up to, like, a LeBron James and she even threw Steph Curry out there. Steph Curry's not a big man in this league. Yeah. Uh, but also, those guys have been in the league for a, a decade plus. Brunson is just getting started. And even last night with Candace Parker, she's going back to the Jalen Brunson that was in Dallas. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the Jalen Brunson we're no. seeing now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's just that's just not doing your research. And a big company like TNT, you, you got nerds behind desks all over that place. At least, you know, pull out some stats and, and give us some accurate figures there. But it's like you said, you know, Brunson's only been on the scene, this is a year and a half as being a starter in this league. And so it's going to take a little bit of time for him to, to get that respect. But I, I think slowly the league is coming around to it. Knicks fans certainly embrace him. But he needs help, man. He, he definitely needs help. They, they won over the Nets, which is great. You had him and Julius Randle both scoring 60 points. But what happens on an off night? What happens if those guys are misfiring? Or what happens if a, a defensive team is successful in slowing down a Jalen Brunson? That's where that extra firepower is going to be needed. And so it's left to be seen how this team will move forward between now and the February 8th trade deadline. Yeah, or God forbid one of those guys gets hurt, not to speak that into existence, not to yeah. put that out there, but, you know, Isaiah Hartenstein was was hurt. And, you know, talking about pundits, right, I, I always reference Stephen A. Smith just like three weeks ago talking about, oh, I got to watch some guy, Isaiah Hartenstein. And, like, clearly you haven't watched him. Clearly you haven't been paying attention. He's yeah. the least of your worries. Uh, he plays hard. He's, he's, he's a guy that you should be happy you have with Mitchell Robinson going down. Uh, he's obviously out last night. Jericho Sims steps up. Um, you're thinking that you're going to get Mitch Rob back by the end of the season. Obviously, Hartenstein will come back. But, like, I mean, they have the depth. How do you feel about the center position, the five position with the, with the Knicks moving forward? It, I, I would say, you know, one to ten concern. I would say about a seven, only because, you know, I love the way that Hartenstein has been playing. His defense has really stepped up. Uh, I mean, you know, he, he was looking like Mitchell Robinson out there for a couple of games uh, when he played uh, for Mitch. And then offensively, what he gives the Knicks, being able to space the floor for them a little bit, being able to run offense through Hartenstein. That's one thing that you, you couldn't really do through Mitchell Robinson. So uh, I love the, the change of dynamic that he brought to the team. 
Now, when he goes down, what happens? They went to Jericho Sims. They went to Precious Achua in the win over the Nets. And I thought those guys really gave it a great effort. I mean, Jericho Sims, uh, first quarter, had four blocks in that game. So he had great energy. Precious Achua closed very well in that game. Now, they were denied the disabled player exemption by the league uh, for, for Mitchell Robinson, thinking that Mitchell Robinson may be back by the end of the season. Now, the problem is, is that what shape will he be in by the time he gets back? When Mitchell Robinson came back from a broken foot two years ago to start off the regular season, he was in pretty bad shape. He was laboring a little bit. And so there's no telling if he's going to come back and, and just jump right into form. I think it's hard to assume that. Because and, and this year, he I mean, he came into camp in great shape. And that's the most disappointing thing about losing Mitchell Robinson was that he was really having a great year. He was in great shape, great spirits, and really dominating at his position. So I still think even at the trade deadline, I would love for them to go out there and get more depth because you just don't know what's going to happen with Hartenstein between now and the end of the season. They need a more veteran presence there, but primarily uh, it, it's going to be on the perimeter where, where they need the, the biggest upgrade. Yeah, last thing before we let you go, you know, as I'm telling Knicks fans tonight, hey, don't don't be worried about the measly Nets. The Nets are a bottom three team in the league. Here comes, speaking of the five position, Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets coming to the Garden tomorrow. And then you've got a stretch of games bet- between now and the trade deadline where you'll see the Miami Heat, you'll see the Pacers, you'll see the Lakers, the Mavs. Like, you'll see the Pacers again. This is an important stretch for the Knicks to lock in. Beating the Nets by five, coming back to win is, is cool or whatever. But I know the Nets got or the Knicks got to lock in for this next run. What do you expect to see? I mean, at least you got the Nuggets and the Heat in your own building. Yeah, they're they're definitely going to need to lock in. Um, the the game against the champs is, is always a great measuring stick and and always uh, a fun environment. They did beat Denver last year at MSG, which was a pretty fun game that I, that I was at. But the, this Miami game to me is more important. They're one zero against the Heat in the season series. The Heat just upgraded by adding Terry Rozier uh, to their roster, and you know it's going to be important here because this Miami Heat team they're two and a half games back of the Knicks. Knicks sitting in the fifth spot. You have the Indiana Pacers who are sitting there in the seventh spot who are three games in back of the heat. The Knicks will face them twice between now and February 10th. And so these games, when you're looking at the fourth through, say, eighth seed in the East, and the Knicks having to play the Heat, the Pacers, the the Orlando Magic, these are going to be like playoff games, Keith, because you have to factor in tiebreakers. These teams are all fairly evenly matched. And so you can't slip. You have to take all these games seriously. The one good thing I like about the Knicks is that in this month of January, it's a home heavy schedule. And so the next eight out of the the next eight out of the eight out of the next nine games, they will be at Madison Square Garden. And so while this team is a work in progress and they have a lot of work to do, they will benefit from having a home heavy schedule. And hopefully that will help them capitalize and, uh, and, and get into shape. Yup. Knicks fans go pack your own building. It's easy to get a little cheap ticket a couple months in advance to go to Barclays, <laughs> go pack your own building. The Knicks are going to need y'all. CP, you're the man. Uh, last thing, I'm rooting for Julius Randle. I know people are already preemptively expecting him to just, you know, fall flat on his face in, in the playoffs. I'm rooting for Julius Randle to silence his critics this year. I hope so, me because it means success for the Knicks, because the Knicks need him. They make no mistake. The Knicks will need him to have any type of success past, say, the second round of the playoffs. So, uh, he, he, he's due for a big one. You hope that he can shake the demons, but for right now, I, I, I would say for Knicks fans, just enjoy what he's doing for this team for the regular season, because he's changed his approach. He's changed his shot selection. He's opted for bully ball, which is where he's playing to his strengths and he's leading out there and, and for most nights, both ends of the court. So I like this version of Julius Randall. We'll let the playoff Julius, uh, we'll let him speak for himself when that time comes, but for right now, he's looking good, man. CP, thank you, bro. That's CP the Franchise from Nick Fan TV. 